Since President Joe Biden has taken office, gas prices have gone up over 50%. Lower and middle class American families are struggling because of that. It's hard to afford this extra gas. Now, in order to get gas prices back down, we have different uh, members of Congress offering solutions. So in the House, we actually recently had a bill that was both introduced and passed, not just by all Republicans, but also by a majority. Over half of Democrats also passed this bill as well. Now, whether or not the Senate actually takes it up and passes it as well, it's hard to say. And already, President Joe Biden said that if this bill passes, he is just going to veto the bill. He is going to refuse to sign any bill that, you know, could potentially make this country any better or could potentially make gas prices even lower. So this is straight from the hill here. Right now, one of uh, Biden's cabinet members, Jennifer Granholm, said that if, Con if Congress were to pass H.R. 21, the president would veto it. He will not allow the American people to suffer because of the backwards agenda that House Republicans are advancing. It goes on to say that the legislation would require the federal government to develop a plan to increase the percentage of federal lands leased for new oil and gas production in order to withdraw oil from the strategic reserve. It includes an exception for severe energy supply interruptions. Now, over the past year or so, Biden has been selling some of the oil from our strategic reserve over to China. We are not producing more new oil here at home because Biden has blocked, you know, new oil protection, new oil production in the United States multiple times. He has shut down the Keystone XL pipeline. He's saying the energy production, new energy production from Canada to United States is just, just this terrible thing because we need to remove our, our carbon footprint. We need to stop emissions is a terrible thing. We need to, you know, this whole new Green New Deal agenda. But at the same time, he's green lighting plans where we're going to have pipelines from Russia to Europe. They're saying it's completely fine if the Saudis produce more oil and produce more gas, send oil from Saudi Arabia. He'll go to Saudi Arabia in his private jet, of course, and, you know, create this giant carbon footprint doing that himself on his private jet. Um, and that, you know, that's completely fine to beg the Saudis for that. But at the same time, it's, it's terrible if we were to have this Keystone XL pipeline or to produce oil ourselves. So what this bill would basically do is it would sort of in a way block us from, uh, from selling oil from our strategic reserve, which should be sort of our piggy bank. It should be kind of like a security for us in case there is some type of, uh, some, some type of event that we're not able to have oil, uh, from other countries sent over to us that we can dig into like our piggy bank here, something bad were to happen like a hurricane or something like that. Well, he's selling this oil to China and this oil is, you know, it should be our security. It should be like our piggy bank in case something bad happens. It should be for us. But yet he's selling this to, it's going to China. So, you know, so that's ridiculous. And, you know, you, you can see just by the bill itself, it passed in the house. And not just all Republicans voted for it, more than half of the Democrats voted for it as well. And he's already saying that he is going to block the bill if it passes. So again, this is very ridiculous. Now I'm going to go ahead and play a video by Steve Scalise. He talks about this bill and says that the Senate absolutely needs to take it up and pass it. And Biden needs to go ahead and sign it into law as well. Watch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I want to thank the gentle lady for yielding and uh, for the great job she's doing as chair of the Energy and Commerce Committee to bring forward important bills that will increase America's national security and energy security. There is absolutely no reason that we have to be reliant on foreign countries for our energy. We've actually got the energy here in America. And in fact, for those people that are concerned about carbon emissions, you know, for all those carbon footprint warriors that get on their private jets and fly to Davos last week to lecture the rest of the world about not using fossil fuels. They didn't take commercial flights. They had to take their private charters, not with solar panels on the wings of those airplanes, using jet fuel. So they lecture the whole world about getting rid of fossil fuels in America, not in other countries. You saw President Biden himself get on Air Force One and fly to Saudi and beg Saudi princes to produce more energy as he's shutting down production in America, limiting leases, limiting pipelines, killing Keystone and other pipelines, limiting the ability to get permits to do basic exploration in America. He's greenlighting pipelines in Russia, greenlighting pipelines and drilling in other places, urging and begging drilling in other places. Well, by the way, if you're concerned about the carbon footprint, 
No country in the world that produces energy does it better than America. We should want to be doing more in America. But then as production goes up and goes down based on good or bad policies, as we're seeing today with bad policies, the nation back in the 1970s said, we're going to have a strategic petroleum reserve. In essence, an American piggy bank to protect our country in case there's some major disruption in world markets, in energy production in America. Maybe there's a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico that limits our ability to produce energy for a brief period of time. That's why we have a strategic petroleum reserve. It's not there to go mask your bad policies, and yet that's what we've seen from this president. As you can see, this president has raided more than 40% of America's strategic reserve. Our piggy bank, he's just taken it away. In some cases, he actually sold that oil to China. We came together last week, Republicans and Democrats. The press actually said it was going to be a partisan exercise. Why even waste the time? Well, what they found out is not only did every Republican say it's wrong to raid our piggy bank in America and sell it to China, a majority of Democrats actually agreed with us and sent that bill to the Senate. I urge the Senate to take up that bill that's important to America's national security. But then today we go even further and say, Mr. President, with this bill, H.R. 21, if you're going to raid our reserves, won't you at least put forward a plan to show how you will replace it? And don't worry, I know the White House gets nervous when you tell them that you've got to produce energy in America. They don't have a problem, again, with foreign countries producing energy. They just don't want it made in America. They use the tagline a lot. You hear it all the time, made in America except when it comes to making energy, they don't want to make it in America. They make it harder to make it in America. They beg foreign countries to make our energy. This bill says, gives an exemption, except in the case of a severe energy supply interruption. So the president's still got the ability, if there's some actual emergency, to use the Strategic Petroleum Reserve the way it was intended in the 1970s. All this bill says is if your bad policy is leading to higher gas prices, and people are getting angry about that, as they should, you can't go and raid it unless you show a plan, as the bill says, the development of a plan to increase oil and gas production under oil and gas leases of federal lands here. So this would make a lot of sense, except if you're at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. In fact, yesterday, the president actually issued a veto threat on this bill. Now, a veto threat should be a rare exercise that you reserve for policy that might hurt the country. Well, let's read why the president issued the veto threat. In his veto threat, he said, the administration's use of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve has been essential to protecting our energy security and to lowering gas prices for Americans. I hope I'm not the one that breaks this news to the White House, but Mr. President, your policies have not lowered gas prices for Americans. Maybe the calculator's broken at the White House, but we did the math. Let's do some fact checking. Since Joe Biden took the oath of office, gas prices have not lowered. They've increased 50 percent. Again, the veto threat says we don't want to do this because our policies have lowered gas prices. Maybe the president, when he realizes that gas prices have gone up 50 percent, they've not lowered for families, he might reverse the veto threat. So we'll wait during this debate. Maybe we get a reversal of this veto threat once he realizes that gas prices have actually gone up, not a little, but a lot. 50% increase for a low-income family who is struggling already under the weight of President Biden's spending that's led to inflation and higher prices everywhere you go. The grocery store supply chain increases. This is crushing middle-class families. It's crushing lower-income families. And so what we say is let's just use our resources. The president actually goes on to say, and this might be the most perplexing part of the president's veto threat, probably explains the most why the president is so misguided on energy policy. He says, because H.R. 21 will jeopardize our energy security and increase gas prices for working families, the administration strongly opposes the bill. So somehow, some of the energy experts at the White House, again, some of the same people that fly around on private planes to Davos telling you not to use fossil fuels, they think that by increasing American energy production, that will somehow raise gas prices. Well, guess what? We've checked the record. These are the same experts whose policies 
have increased gas prices, not a little, 50 percent. So the White House has been wrong on this issue over and over again to the point where we had such a strong bipartisan vote last week. Let's put up another strong bipartisan vote and maybe wake the people up at the White House to what's happening in the real world. When families who are struggling go to fill up their gas tanks, they're not paying less, as the president suggests. Again, the president actually thinks in his veto threat that his policies have lowered gas prices. A 50 percent increase is not a lower gas price. It's actually a kick to the gut of those families who are struggling, and we've got to stop having Washington kick them in the gut. And so if you look at the moniker right above the speaker's rostrum, there's a plaque that says, let us develop the natural resources of our land. Why don't we actually do that? Why don't we actually do what's proven to work over and over again? If we open up American energy, it's the cleanest in the world. Don't beg foreign dictators to do it. They don't do it as clean as us, by the way. And oh, but it also lowers prices. It also creates good American jobs. Let's actually make it in America again. And if you're going to raid the piggy bank, at minimum, show the country your plan for how you plan to replace it. That's the least this president should do. Let's pass this bill with a strong vote over to the Senate and then get this on the president's desk and maybe he'll reconsider and recognize just what his policies have done to hurt families over these last two years. With that, I urge adoption of H.R. 21 and I yield back the balance of my time.